Have you ever wondered what it would be like to walk among the gods of ancient Egypt? To witness their immense power and majesty, and to feel the weight of their influence on the world? Welcome to our magical journey through the sands of ancient Egypt, where these gods reigned supreme, and the mysteries of the universe were unlocked. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the top 10 most powerful and awe-inspiring gods of ancient Egypt, and uncovering the secrets behind their worship and depiction. So, if you're ready to embark on a journey of wonderful Egyptian mythology, then let's get started. Number 10. Ta. The god Ta was highly esteemed among the ancient Egyptians, and as the god of craftsmen, architects, and creation, he was renowned for his divine ability to bring the world into being. According to ancient texts, Ta designed the world with his heart and brought the gods and their cause to life through his heart and tongue. Often portrayed as a mummified man with green skin and a shroud, Ta's beard is considered divine, and his scepter is a significant symbol of the three creative powers of ancient Egyptian religion, namely, power, life, and stability, making him an emblematic figure for the ancient Egyptians. One of Ta's most intriguing forms is Tetenen, which is depicted as a youthful and dynamic figure, sporting a crown with two towering plumes that encircle the solar disk. This form embodies the subterranean fire that rumbles and elevates the earth, thus metalworkers and blacksmiths held him in high regard. Despite this reverence, he is also a formidable force of nature, with the power to induce earthquakes and tremors in the earth's crust. Number 9. Sabek. The Nile was the lifeline of ancient Egypt, and Sabek was its vigilant guardian. As the god of the Nile, crocodiles, and fertility, he was revered across Egypt, especially among the people of the Fayum region, who regarded him as the controller of Nile's flooding. Sabek was commonly portrayed with the head of a crocodile, which symbolized his aggressive and animalistic nature, but despite this, he also exhibited great kindness and compassion. Following his alignment with Horus, Sabek was linked to Isis as a healer of the deceased Osiris, and as a result of this connection, Sabek became a guardian deity, revered for his ability to provide protection. Sabek's formidable strength not only protected the virtuous but also banished malice. His divinity encompassed pharaonic authority, fertility, and military valor, thus making him a deity with diverse attributes. Certain sects of ancient Egypt attributed the creation of the order of the universe to Sabek, and he held a special place in the heart of the first female pharaoh, Nefera Sabek. Number 8. Mahiz. This was an Egyptian god with the head of a lion, and was known as the god of war and protection, and his name, which means he who is true beside her, suggests his strong and loyal nature. Mahiz was believed to be the son of the creator god Ta, and was also connected to weather, and was revered as the god of knives, lotuses, and devouring captives. The earliest known mention of Mahiz dates back to the New Kingdom period, and some scholars have proposed that he may have originated from a foreign culture, as there is evidence indicating that he might be the same deity as the Nubian god Apodemak. His name Mahiz starts with the hieroglyphs for a male lion, which was a symbol of great strength and power, and like other feline gods, he was often linked with the pharaohs and was regarded as a patron of Egypt. Number 7, Set. Set was an Egyptian god who was associated with the desert, storms, violence, disorder, and foreignness. Despite his negative associations, Set played a positive role in Egyptian mythology. For instance, he joined Ra on his boat to repel a pep, the serpent of chaos. Set was also regarded as the ruler of the Red Land, the desert, where he balanced Horus, who ruled over the Black Land, the fertile region. In the Osiris myth, Set is portrayed as the usurper who killed and dismembered his own brother, Osiris. Osiris was briefly resurrected, and Isis conceived his son and successor, Horus, who sought revenge upon Set, and many of the ancient Egyptian myths describe their conflicts. One such myth describes how Set seduced Horus in order to demean him, but Horus foiled Set's plan, and his defeat is revealed when Set unwittingly became impregnated with his rival's seed and gives birth to a golden disc that appeared on his forehead. In some accounts, Thoth takes the disc and places it on his own head, while in others, Thoth is the result of this unusual birth. Number 6, Anubis. Anubis, the god of mummification, protector of graves, funerary rites, and guide to the underworld, among other roles, was a popular deity worshipped throughout Egypt. He was often portrayed as a canine or a man with a canine head Dan was depicted in black, a color that symbolized regeneration and life, further emphasizing his role in the afterlife. Anubis played an important role in guiding souls into the afterlife, a task sometimes also performed by Hathor. However, Anubis was usually chosen for this function. He attended the weighing of the heart ceremony where a person's heart was weighed against Mat, the goddess of truth. 
The weight of the heart determined whether a soul was deemed worthy of entering the realm of the dead or the underworld, known as Duat. During this ceremony, Anubis oversaw the weighing scale. Souls that were lighter than a feather would ascend to a heavenly existence, while those heavier than a feather would be devoured by Amit. Anubis was also known as the protector of graves and cemeteries, and was referred to by several titles, such as foremost of the Westerners. This title was also given to Osiris and referred to the deceased who had journeyed to the afterlife in the West. As Set sought to attack the body of Osiris, Anubis transformed himself into a leopard to safeguard it. Following this event, Anubis skinned Set and donned his height as a warning to those who might attempt to defile the tombs of the deceased. In honor of Anubis's triumph over Set, priests who tended to the dead wore leopard skin. Anubis also played a significant role in the embalming and mummification of Osiris after his murder by Set, and this connection made him the god of embalmers. Number 5, Horus. Worshipped throughout Egypt, Horus was the god of the sky, protection, and kingship, and his image was often portrayed with a falcon head. The pharaohs revered Horus as a crucial deity, believing that they embodied the living manifestation of Horus on earth. According to the Osiris myth, Horus was the son of Osiris and Isis, and played a significant role as Osiris's successor and Set's adversary. Horus was born to the goddess Isis, the goddess of magic and motherhood, who used her powers to reassemble the body of her murdered husband Osiris and bring him back to life. She then became pregnant with Horus, who was born in secret in the Nile Delta marshlands where she had fled to escape Set's wrath. According to Egyptian belief, the sun was associated with the god's right eye and the moon with his left eye. The contendings of Horus and Seth myth explained why the moon was not as bright as the sun. In this tale, Seth, the patron deity of Upper Egypt, and Horus, the patron deity of Lower Egypt, fought fiercely for control of Egypt, but neither emerged victorious until the gods sided with Horus. As a result of his ultimate triumph, Horus was known as Horus the Great. During the conflict, Set had suffered the loss of a testicle, while Horus had one of his eyes gouged out. The Eye of Horus became a well-known ancient Egyptian symbol of protection and royal power, and represented the Eye of Horus or Ra. Number 4, Thoth. Thoth was a god with a diverse range of attributes including wisdom, writing, the moon, hieroglyphs, science, magic, art, and judgment. He was commonly depicted with the head of an ibis or baboon, and was especially revered by the scribes, who sought as inspiration and guidance in their work. In Egyptian mythology, Thoth played a pivotal role in maintaining the universe, and was one of the two deities, the other being Mat, who stood on either side of Ra's solar bark. In later times, Thoth became closely associated with the arbitration of godly disputes, the practice of magic, the development of writing, and the weighing of souls in the judgment of the dead. Thoth was also credited with inventing the Egyptian hieroglyphs, and the ancient Egyptians considered him to be self-begotten. He was revered as the master of both physical and moral law, and he advocated for the proper use of truth. Thoth was also responsible for the calculations that established the heavens, stars, earth, and all that existed within them. In addition to his role in science and religion, Thoth was credited by the Egyptians as the author of philosophy and magic, with the Greeks going further, attributing to him the complete authorship of every work and every field of knowledge, whether human or divine. Number 3, Osiris. Osiris was the god of the afterlife, resurrection, and fertility, and was typically portrayed with green skin and a pharaoh's beard. In artistic depictions, he was typically shown as a partially mummy-wrapped figure with a pharaoh's beard, wearing an ot of crown, and holding a crook and flail. According to mythology, Osiris was tricked by Set, who lured him into a box, sealed it with lead, and threw it into the Nile. Isis, Osiris's wife, searched for his remains until she eventually found him and retrieved his body. In one version of the myth, Isis cast a spell to temporarily revive Osiris, allowing him to impregnate her. After embalming and burying Osiris, Isis gave birth to their son, Horus. From then on, Osiris became known as the god of the underworld. Due to his death and resurrection, he became associated with natural cycles, such as the growth of plants and the annual flooding of the Nile River. He was also regarded as the sovereign who granted all life, and as the judge and lord of the dead and the underworld, Osiris was also called foremost of the Westerners, where Westerners referred to the dead. Number 2, Ra. Ra, the god of the sun, creation, and kingship, was commonly depicted with the head of a falcon, embellished with a sun disc between his horns and a cobra wrapped around it. Ra's dominion was mainly associated with the midday sun, and he governed all aspects of the created universe, including the sky, earth, and underworld. 
His portrayal as a falcon shared similarities with the sky god Horus, and sometimes, the two deities were combined. During the New Kingdom, Ra was fused with a moon to become a moon Ra as a moon rose to prominence. According to Egyptian beliefs, Ra created all forms of life, including humans, who were said to have been created from his tears and sweat. This is why the Egyptians referred to themselves as the cattle of Ra. As the god of the sun, Ra had the responsibility of guiding the sun on his solar bark across the sky during the day, but at dusk, he and his vessel would pass through the horizon in the west to reach the underworld. During the night, Apophis would try to attack Ra and halt the sun boat's journey, but after defeating the serpent, Ra would emerge from the underworld at dawn, once again illuminating the day. Ra was believed to travel in his falcon-headed form on the manjet bark throughout the day and switch to the mesectic bark in his ram-headed form to descend into the underworld for the night hours. Number 1, Amun-Ra. Amun-Ra, revered as the god of creation, fertility, and kingship, was typically portrayed with a ram's head and was worshipped across Egypt. As one of the most powerful and venerated gods in ancient Egypt, he was recognized as the king of the gods, embodying the highest authority and power within the Egyptian pantheon. During the New Kingdom period, Amun-Ra emerged as a composite deity, formed by the merging of the sun god Ra and the air god Amun, and his worship rapidly spread throughout Egypt. The name Amun translates to the Hidden One, and as the chief deity of the Egyptian empire, Amun-Ra also came to be worshipped outside Egypt, in Libya and Nubia who called him Amani, and came to be identified with Zeus, who was the god of the sky and thunder in ancient Greece. His depiction varied from a falcon-headed man to a ram with curved horns and was revered by pharaohs who considered themselves his earthly representatives and protectors. Many temples and monuments were erected in his honor, including the magnificent Karnak Temple in Thebes. Amun-Ra's influence could be seen in various aspects of life, from the growth of crops to the success of military. In conclusion, the gods of ancient Egypt were more than just deities, they were fundamental aspects of daily life and belief systems that shaped the civilization's history and culture, and their stories continue to fascinate people around the world, offering a glimpse into the rich and complex mythology of one of humanity's most ancient societies.